Hello everyone! Hero Talents are coming to World of Warcraft with the upcoming expansion War Within, and they're looking for your feedback. To get the ball rolling, myself and other content creators have been invited to do some interviews. As you all know, I am a well-known pro gamer, not for my lore knowledge, but rather my epic skills as a paladin. Still though, uh, to help out with the more intricate detailed questions, we've got Flame from Marcellian Online. Together, we tackled diving into their plans with this new system. I'll play the entire interview with timestamps in just a moment. But first, let me give you a synopsis. Hero Talents will offer a new talent window which you can spec into. And the interesting part is that a set of Hero Talents is going to be available for two of our specs. Meaning that Holy and Retribution Paladins, you could choose to be a Herald of the Sun. Or, Retribution Paladins, you can join Protection Paladins over at the Templar. Or, which is the hero talent we got more information on, Protection and Holy Paladins, you can choose to be a Lightsmith. Meaning that these new abilities and upgrades, they're going to have to work for two different playstyles. Tanks and healers will both need to get value and balance out of being a Lightsmith. From the name itself, you already get a feeling as to what this hero spec is about. You're going to forge the light into something. And that was our aim when trying to decide on names and themes. You unlock it by getting talent points as you level up. There aren't any quests required to earn your skills. That also means it won't be part of the pre-patch. It will be purely there once the new expansion is open. At level 80, at max level, you'll have enough points to unlock everything that's available in the trees, but some of the talents will make you pick between one or the other, depending on what you want for your playstyle. People in the world are not going to recognize you as lightsmiths either. It's not a title or position that you earn, like we've had High Lords in the past. It's purely a name, a flavor scheme for this new system. Right now, they're focused on getting the initial set of talents up and running to see how the system is going to play out in the wilds. That doesn't mean that there won't be additional talents added later, but for now, this is what they're focusing on. The same goes for visual cosmetic updates to the spells. We've had quests like the Warlock Greenfire questline, or back in Legion where we uncovered more skins for the artifacts. We asked if those visual upgrades are in the works, and while it's definitely something on their minds, and they are looking for cool ideas for cool suggestions, right now what they want to do is make the system work properly, and that's where they need you. That's definitely one of the major feelings I walked away with after this interview. They're very excited about this new system, and they want to make it as cool as interesting as they can, but for that to work, they need feedback. Not just how the numbers are going out, not just that they should totally buff the paladins and nerf all the other classes. They're also interested in suggestions for names, uh, visuals, backgrounds, maybe completely new talents to replace what they got right now. That's what they're looking for. Our input, from reading blog posts to eventually testing these abilities in the wild on the alpha, on the beta, and potentially PTR. I did ask about their invite plans and whatnot to get these talents into as many hands as quickly as possible, but they couldn't give specifics at this point in time. I'll link a blog post about hero talents and giving feedback in the description down below. That's the general idea behind this interview and what is to come with the hero talents. Then more specifically for the Lightsmith, the new major heroic ability available for paladin tanks and healers. That is called Holy Armaments. Please keep in mind, everything is subject to change, but this is what we got to work with right now. Will the light, the coalesce, become manifest at its target location as a Holy Armament, which may be wielded by you or your allies? Alternate between Holy Bulwark and Sacred Weapon, last 20 seconds after being cast, with a max of two charges. To visualize this, I'd compare dropping it like what we have with Final Reckoning. Click on the spell, click on where on the ground you wanted to land, and there's your armament on the ground. We asked if this would operate similarly to a light well, as in players would have to move over and click on it. But right now they got it set up in such a way that you need to walk over it in order to gain its benefits. Alternations happen on the spell itself. So the first time that you cast it, it would be, for example, Holy Bulwark. The second cast would be Sacred Weapon. And then once the cooldown is over, your third cast would be Holy Bulwark again, go back to Sacred Weapon, go on and rotate. Visually, they're still wondering how to make this distinct on the battlefield. That's already pretty cluttered with a lot of spell effects. As well as how many armaments can be on the battlefield at the same time. If they would despawn as you pull a boss, how quickly you would get the buff when you touch the armaments. There's still a lot to be decided in that direction. So what do you get with the armaments? Well, Holy Bulwark is going to give you an absorption shield for 15% of your maximum health. And then an additional 5% every 2 seconds. Stacking up to a total of 30% of your maximum health. Sacred Weapon will give your spell and abilities a chance to deal additional holy damage or healing. 
a talent that stood out was Divine Inspiration, which gives your spells and abilities a chance to manifest a Holy Armor nearby, so a proc, which you can pick as a talent instead of Forewarning. Forewarning is a general cooldown reduction on your Holy Armor's ability. This is what had me wonder if there's going to be a maximum amount of armaments on the battlefield and how long they would last before despawning. I could imagine degenerate gameplay in which you pull some trash, you litter the floor of armaments before pulling the boss and then you go ham on it, but it's something that they are thinking about and they'll have to tweak to make random procs feel impactful but not so much overpowered. I did love their reaction though, I did love how they thought it would be cool to see all those armaments on the battlefield. Again, they just left me with the vibe of they want to make this hero talent thing a cool fun addition to the game, and again, they're looking for feedback. From just reading this, my initial feedback would be give us more control over the ability itself. Rotating between a shield and a damage or healing increase, it can make it feel like you're throwing out one just to get the one that you want ready. I'd imagine that in the current game setting, the sacred weapon will be more favored because, you know, numbers go brrr, but then knowing that high damage is coming, you might want to line up a shield instead. I would prefer if the button was separated into two, and I would have the choice as to what armament to place at any given time. Next to that, I would say change the way that we pick up the armaments, change the way of acquisition. A lot of the gameplay right now is based on where you're standing, and having people move to pick up your buff, or make sure that they're not picking up your buff, a buff that you're throwing out on a battlefield, it just it adds more complications to an already cluttered battlefield. Instead, I would suggest let us pick a specific target, let us pick a player that will obtain our armaments. It might be cool visually to have like a Igira the Cruel, wholly infused in the background, hammering away at armaments of our choosing, and our control would be who gets what armaments at what given time. And that target, they'll automatically get the armament thrown at them. This way you would turn it into a buff, a utility that we can throw at other players, instead of another thing that we have to consider ourselves or concern ourselves with that's on the floor. But that's just my initial take, and a lot more is going to be revealed once we see this play out in a testing scene, once the numbers come out, once the feedback starts rolling in. With that, I'll run the entire interview, and again, by all means, check out the blog post in the description down below. Flame and I, for our interview, we got to sit down with, and I hope I pronounced this right, George Velleff, game producer, and Jade Martin, lead combat designer. If you want to see Flame's take and their video on this, of course, I'll link it in the description down below. And with that... I hope you'll enjoy. First of all, I would like to thank you guys for uh, agreeing to have a chat with us. We're super, super excited about uh, Lightsmith, which I understand is what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, super excited about the whole thing uh, all together. Yeah, happy to be here. It's yeah. a pleasure. It's great having, having you guys here. Excited to talk about it. It's going to be great with four different voices going on at the same time. Well, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> of course. <laughs> try to uh to keep it a little bit clean so uh yeah i think we're gonna probably just get right into it so that we make the most of our a uh, lot of time and not keep you guys uh more than than it's necessary uh regarding lightsmith and i think uh we're gonna start it off with noble right yeah um won't take up too much uh, of the time um some questions here so we know that we're gonna get talents as we level up uh are these new talents are they just gonna be available as we get into the expansion or do we need to unlock them with gameplay or quests uh, yeah, <laughs> good question. So right now, uh, hero talents are an extension of the Dragonflight talent tree system, right? You'll unlock the hero talent systems when you hit level 71, and you'll get your first point then. Every level up afterwards, you'll get one talent point until you hit 80, uh, by which point you will have unlocked all of the talents within the tree. Okay, so it's going to be there. Uh, are there already more talents planned for later down the expansion, or is this going to be it for the entirety of the expansion? You know, uh, right now we're just focused on developing these for... Uh, or within launch. Um, we're building this out as evergreen, so it's certainly possible down the line, you know, maybe later in the expansion or future expansions, we do more for the system and it will evolve. Uh, but nothing new to share at this time. Um, but, so, you know, certainly inevitable things will change over time. But for right now, just focus on these trees for launch. Okay. Um, with these new talents and new abilities, we're also going to get new visual upgrades. Uh, we will be able to unlock more visual customizations, like, for example, uh, the Warlock Greenfire quest line. Will there be quest lines or things to collect to upgrade the visuals? A great question. Uh, nothing that we could talk about at this time, but it's certainly top of mind for us. Um, we're going to try to make these hero talent trees visually impactful. So there's a lot of avenues that we're exploring. Cool. Um, so as Paladins, we got Lightsmith, Herald of the Sun, and uh, Templar. We got these as the talent names, as the kits. Will people in the game also recognize us as a Lightsmith, like we were High Lords in the past, or is this purely for a naming scheme? Currently, 
no. Right now, really, fundamentally, this is just a system, right? It's an addendum to the talent system, right? Really, you're picking up the teachings of, you know, the lightsmith or the sand lane keeper of the grove. You're not necessarily becoming one. Uh, so okay. there's no there's no intent for people to recognize recognize you as the lightsmith currently. Okay. And in the case of the paladins, will we dive into deeper um, backgrounds of different light wielders? For example, Anchi for the Taran or just the Naru or something in that regard? Or again, is it purely a name for the talent system? Currently, right now, yeah, mostly just the name for the talent system at the moment. Yes. Okay. And what's the there, what's been? Uh, sorry, sorry. I just just to expand on that a little bit, um, you know, like George mentioned uh, earlier to one of the earlier questions, like this is an evergreen system. There might be room for us to explore later. You know, maybe integrating it a little bit more into the lore and those those types of things like quests and maybe even class order halls. Like, there's a lot of cool things here for us in the future. But right now, we're just planning this as a you know a secondary talent system, if you will. Yeah, I've been brought in as the lore guy, not so much as the, the skill talent guy. So I'm, I'm more about the whole gameplay thing, but it's cool to hear that it could be a potential in the future. Um, how exactly did you go about like picking stuff like Lightsmith or Held of the Sun or Templars? Like, What's the process been behind there? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, it's really fun, but as you can imagine, very difficult. Um, we did a lot of you know virtual offsites where we just sat in calls for hours and we talked about what made sense for these three talent combinations you know if we could if we pick lightsmith for this combination what makes sense here um and really it's sort of conversation you know amongst the combat team uh conversation with our narrative partners and a lot of other teams on world of warcraft um ultimately we came to the conclusion that our 39 that we published at BlizzCon were ones that we felt good about so we went with those. Um, and at that point, once you have the names, you sort of figure out the design. Some are easier to sort of start off with. You know, Lightsmith kind of have an idea of what it's going to do. It's going to make something out of light. Uh, Holy Armaments happen because of that. Some are more difficult, like San Lane, where uh, it's very much Blood Death Knight, right? So it's on us to figure out what are fun and cool design hooks for Unholy as well. So it's really fun, very difficult process, but also really fulfilling. I can imagine. Because... As you mentioned, Lightsmith is going to forge the light into Holy Armaments on the battlefield. Um, and we've got a description as to what the talent is going to do. But could you paint us a picture as to how it is going to look like in-game? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so functionally, it's it's an ability you have, right? It's going to be a ground-targeted reticle that you place within the within the world at a, at a set location. You can either cast it you know, directly on top of a player, or you can place it nearby them, and they can walk through and pick it up. Uh, visually, what it's looking like, we're still kind of early, actually. Um, <clears throat> I think we had a kickoff meeting for Lightsmith just this past week um, about what these holy armaments would actually look like. So visually, we're still trying to figure out what that is, how much space they take up, you know, <clears throat> how we can make sure to draw players' attention to them without it getting lost. Because, you know, there's a lot of visual space within the ground that we have to be cognizant of. Um, you know, maybe adding verticality to them a little bit would help us. Um, so still still exploring what these look like. Okay, because we were reading through the tenants and it's not right now in this iteration, it's not like a, a light well where you have to move and click on it. It's you walk over it or you spawn it on somebody and they automatically pick it up. Yeah, exactly. So you'd walk over, uh, pick it up. You know, we're still tr trying to figure out what the trigger for that is. Like we, right now it is walking it over it, but, you know, we're, we're discussing should there be a delay so it, someone doesn't accidentally pick it up too quickly or you give people time to uh, react to it without feeling like they have to stand right on top of it or even move out of it if they're not someone who wants to pick it up at that yeah. time, right? So uh, we're still we're still figuring out how we want to deliver that mechanic fully, but we have an early version in that we're playtesting right now, actually. Okay, because right now the ability says that it uh, rotates between bulwark and uh, armament, so behind the, the shield ability and, and the weapon increase. Um, we were actually discussing this before the interview. Is the rotation on the ability itself? Like, do you use it and you get the bubble first and then you get a damage and then you get a bubble? Or does the player itself get to decide what the buff is going to be? It's it's on the ability itself. So you cast it once, okay. it's bulwark. You cast it in the second time. Um it's the one after that. That name escapes me, uh, unfortunately. Sacred weapon. Sacred weapon. Sacred yes. Weapon, yeah. Thank you, Jade. Uh, uh -huh. So no, it's it's really controlled by the paladin. Okay. Well, we're diving into uh, deeper into the talents in here. So this is your uh, area of flame. I'm going to pass it on to you. 
Um, I will. Uh, I have a couple of more technical questions, and they kind of play off of what you guys discussed in the way that the mechanic will work. So possibly the answer might uh, implicate that as well. In the grand scheme of things, what are your thoughts on how these talents will play and their impact on your rotation? Like how Protection Paladin has the stationary consecration playstyle, foreseeing uh, the heavy play when it comes to survivability because you have to if you have to move outside of consecration then you're kind of losing a lot of damage reduction and since we don't know exactly how the armaments will spawn does the spawn rate or distance from the paladin itself force the the paladin out of the consecration or or is this something at all that you're considering when it comes to impacting the rotation and play style yeah generally speaking we we want hero talents to elevate your your current rotation and gameplay style um, and influence them, maybe have a couple of subtle changes here and there, but we're not looking to like upset the balance of what your core rotation is. Uh, so like, you know, we're, you know, if we look at divine inspiration within the lightsmith tree, which has a chance to spawn a holy armament nearby, you know, we're not, we're not putting it 20 yards away from your consecration, right? Like it's going to be nearby your consecration. We're not going to force you out of it. Ideally, it's going to be really easy for you to pick up or someone else in, in that matter. Uh, one of the cool talents within the lightsmith tree is actually solidarity, which, um, Anytime an ally picks up an armament, you actually get the benefits as well. So even if it does spawn maybe a little bit far away from your consecration, if you're playing prop pally, right, someone else can pick up the armament for you and you will actually get the benefits too. So we are trying to take those things into consideration. That's uh, that's actually lovely to hear. As a protection paladin, I like to feel safe in my uh, my consecration. Uh, you mentioned divine inspiration, and if I'm not mistaken, currently that is a choice note together with forewarning. And I wanted to ask, uh, in the sense of these choices, making them feel um, kind of like a good choice. The choice note between this and forewarning essentially makes it feel uh, that it relies entirely on whether or not forewarning makes the armament align with other cooldowns, since we don't know exactly what the cooldown is. If this will be the case, the chances of forewarning being preferred 100% of the time is very likely. Is this something you would take into consideration when designing and tuning cooldown lengths and reductions for the holy armament and potentially other cooldowns for the paladin? Yeah, it's really top of mind for us. Um, the intent with that choice note specifically is to account for situations where there aren't, you know, immediately obvious uses for the armament, you know, where a player doesn't necessarily need or even want to plan out these cooldowns. Or if there are critical moments that are covered by baseline uptime and bonus procs or bonuses, um, you know, it should be expected that a well-timed armament and a well-targeted armament is better than a proc, but a proc is also better than something that is unused. So uh, we are giving ourselves a lot of tuning ops for these. Um, you know, conversations like that are conversations that we have every day. Yeah, just to <clears throat> chime in a little bit there, like this is the type of feedback we definitely want from players as well as we go forward with these and kind of part of the reason why we're getting these out early um, is is to get these kind of feedbacks on choice nodes or even just talent uh, uh, tuning in general, right? Um, another really just, I just wanted to caveat real quick is an important thing to know is like these numbers aren't final. We try to get them into a, a, the numbers into a, a sane state for our internal play testing and stuff, but it is very likely that we will see these, these numbers change before they become public, become available in public testing. And what is your philosophy behind it right now? Cause you mentioned these core and these hero talents uh, should not be part of your core gameplay should not be dominant. Um, are you looking for it as in, you know, you can pick it up or not, it doesn't really matter, or does this something that you really want to time in a fight itself? Oh, they're, <clears throat> so they're, they're going to be impactful in terms of overall player powerful, uh, okay. power for sure. Like these, like, you're not going to want to skip, you know, being lightsmith, right? Like that would just, I, no, I of course. Yeah. Wouldn't recommend. You're definitely going to want talented. You're going to feel the impact of these talents. Um, really what I was stating earlier was we don't want to necessarily, force a player into like one particular play style while abandoning all other play styles if they want lightsmith right we want these to be inviting to to everyone no matter how they play the game so we're looking at ways we can do that to the best of our avail uh, ability um and but yeah these will these will be very impactful talents for sure in terms of overall throughput cool well, great so follow-up question well kind of it's in a similar vein uh, regarding the Valiance talents, right now it says consuming shining light or infusion of light extends the duration of any active armaments by three seconds or reduces the cooldown by three seconds if none exist. 
Uh, my main interest would be, is that, will there be a cap on how much extension one person would be able to get? And how will this balance work with Holy Bulwark, which seems to want the extension of the 30% buff more than the cooldown reduction, which implies you would have to re-ramp re up, let's say, the, the cooldown or the buff strength instead, if a choice between the cooldown reduction and uh, the extension was presumed, of course. It's a great question on the cap, something we probably should talk about on our end, um, which is, you know, again, the point of this uh, early feedback, feedback that is really important for us. Regarding uh, the Bulwark, um, you know, it only stacks up to 30% if the wielder isn't taking damage. So if a player chooses to extend Bulwark in order to give that buffer for an upcoming damage event, that's really their prerogative. Uh, choosing to extend one armament functionally delays the next cast of the other. So it's a trade-off and a balance of your priorities. Great, great. Those kinds of choices are always impactful and fun to have in a, in a spec. And it's nice, nice to see that you're actively thinking about these. Jumping in real quick, by the way, sorry. Um, there's also the talent that you can have uh, armaments randomly spawn on the battlefield. Are there any ideas as to how many weapons you want on the field at, at any time? Is there like a, a despawn timer or is there already something that's being considered? Uh, definitely something to consider. I would have to check in to see what if there's a current cap right now, I think that the proc is infrequent. Like, it's enough to be exciting, but not so much that you're going to have 20 armaments on the battlefield at any given time. Um, but looking at it, I, you know, uh, gut check, I'd say probably I wouldn't want to see like more than, you know, three of these from an individual paladin active at, at, a, at a time. But again, these numbers are are made up and, and we'll have to make sure that we have something that that makes sense for for the, the health of the overall gameplay of it. Yeah, I've been watching the race to bolt first. I've seen degenerate gameplay. I could imagine them pulling trash, putting all kinds of armaments on the battlefield before pulling the boss, and then have all these buffs up. That could yeah. Be... So yeah. yeah, in that in that regard, I don't think these things would last indefinitely. Like we want to make sure that it's it's um, generous enough that people feel like they have time to reach them, uh, but not so long to make it feel like you you have to pick them up. One thing we would all, I, I one thing I think we would definitely do if it's not already in uh set up internally like this is have it clear anytime a, a mythic encounter is pulled um, okay. or ends I, either way that way you're not, you know, stacking these up. One would be cool though. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do it but it would be visually cool. Mm. Um I wanted to also ask about uh, specifically related to Hammer and Anvil. Um, for, right now it says Judgment Critical Strikes cause a shockwave around the talent, dealing additional holy damage or healing at the target's location, strictly re uh, reliant on uh, it being a critical strike. When designing effects that are based on stat priorities, will there be a consideration for how the same stat affects both specs, since crit is historically desired for holy paladins, while protection usually favors haste, mastery, versatility, most of the time more than uh, than crit itself yeah so this is <clears throat> this is something we're definitely thinking about and we definitely are giving ourselves tuning knobs to to account for it right um gonna make up numbers here real quick um just to kind of paint a picture but like let's say for holy paladin crit fight the the node is five percent crit but to get the, roughly the same throughput value uh protection is going to need it to be ten percent crit right um, those numbers are really high. I'm not saying that's what it's going to be, but we would we would make those individual uh, tuning adjustments per spec. So to get the node roughly, like I think there's still some merit to having crit be something cool for for prot to look forward to. So I I don't think we would necessarily change like if it is a crit node for um, holy paladin, but a haste node for prot paladin. I don't think that's generally something we're going to try and do, but we want the value of the overall node to still be impactful for both, so we could see it different based on the spec you're playing. And kind of piggybacking off of this, if at any point in time this talent becomes, I, uh, so you mentioned you have tuning knobs, which is fair. If at any point in time this talent becomes increasingly strong, let's say in, in the case of Prop Paladin, that they would probably alter their entire gearing process to favor more crit just to get more effect out of this one. I would imagine that you might be tuning that as well to kind of keep the balance between uh, let's say a protection paladin wanting to get crit and also be able to survive since crit is a little bit RNG when it comes to survivability as a as a tank. Yeah, de definitely. That, that is something we definitely want to be cognizant of. If 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 this one singular node is so strong that it's driving the entirety of your gearing decisions, that probably means the balance is off somewhere there, right? Like that that's that's probably a little too impactful for an overall node in that regard. 
Um, but if it, you know, if it, if it slightly changes your, you know, your gym or your enchant priorities, I think that's totally fine. That, that seems within a realm of accept acceptability to me. For sure, for sure. Uh, maybe a more interesting one to discuss. Uh, Blessing of the Forge. Right now makes Avenging Wrath summon an additional sacred weapon. And during Avenging Wrath, your sacred weapons cast spells on your target and echoes the effects of your holy power spenders. Uh, the question really is, uh, will the spells cast by the sacred weapon be the same uh, spec variants, like a holy shock if, uh, if it's a holy paladin, or in this case, the spenders, a uh, word of glory? And if so, would there be synergies between the spec and the rest of the kits? Like, uh, let's say, Protection Paladin would cast Shield of the Righteous. Would you be able to stack that on top of your current Shield of the Righteous, extend the duration, or anything of that sort? Or is it just pure flavor? We've we've talked about this a little bit, actually. Um, right now, it's just a damage and healing events that echo, but could go either way. Uh, what do you think is cooler? Well, and I mean, the, the the thing that comes to my mind would obviously be replicating the spells and echoing the spells. That mm. sounds like a cool effect, but I imagine that would be a, a balancing nightmare to factor all of that in. Not to mention that in the in terms of protection paladin, since I'm a little bit more familiar with it, gaining a max duration of shield of Wretch is not particularly difficult. So, in some sense, it might even be a little bit less impactful if that would be the actual intended effect. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, like I said, for now, it's just a damage and healing events, uh, but feedback like that is really important. So uh, something to keep in mind right now, it can go either way. Cool. Yeah, I think I think one of those things is, is just identifying the overall effects and impacts of having it interact with every single talent synergy along those lines and, and whether or not that's just really something that we could actually do without without making it super overpowered, right? There's a there's a lot of tuning implications there that we have to be wary of so uh if something has a lot of things a lot of talents that it synergizes with and interacts with it becomes a lot harder for it to just uh, echo the actual effect itself because you start compounding the the actual impact of that singular talent so i do hear you say a lot of times now like that would be cool that would be cool to be put on the battlefield or what would be more fun and interesting is that something that you're looking for in the feedback as well like are you open for completely new talents or are you more looking for specific numbers and interactions uh, <clears throat> I would say both. Uh, I, I think anytime like someone has an idea of something where it's like, hey, you know, tuning, you know, if, if the feedback is, hey, tuning isn't here, this choice note is not necessarily interesting, that is good stuff for us to know. But if there's something, an idea that is that comes up from a talent was like, you know, this talent's really cool, but it would actually be super awesome if it also did this too. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we love that we read and, and you know, stuff that we can act on so long as it makes sense for, you know, in this example, Lightsmith, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I'm, I'm always open to that kind of feedback personally. Yeah, when we published our Dragonflight Tanner previews. What we published was an early look, and those changed quite a lot from alpha to beta to live. So really, anything is on the table. You know, If something sounds weird and it should be renamed, that's great feedback. If something doesn't make sense for the fantasy of Lightsmith or Sand Lane or Mountain Thane, that's also great feedback. If something's really overpowered, it's great feedback. Um, anything is on the table right now. Really. The windows are open. Okay. Windows are oh. open, yeah. Great, great. Um, a, a few more, well, actually two more specific questions. Again, since uh, we usually dabble a little bit into the numbers and the math of everything. Specifically in relation to Rite of Sanctification, uh, right now it says imbue your weapon with the power of the light, increasing your armor by 5% and your primary stat by 1% and it lasts one hour, while a Rite of Adjuration imbues your weapon with the power of light, increasing your stamina by 3% and causing your holy power spenders to sometimes unleash a burst of healing around the target. Obviously, there's no numbers actually associated with it to, uh, to kind of put it into perspective until we actually get to test it. Um, Historically, main stat buffs have been vastly superior to secondary effects or even stats like the 1% main stat. Uh, stamina seems to behave more like a secondary stat nowadays in terms of its overall value to a character's, in this case, survivability. Assuming balance and tuning is uh, addressed as well, would there be a higher cons consideration for underdog stats like stamina, armor, and essentially damage healing procs so we don't feel like we have to get the main, the main uh, stat buff, since that would always be like the safest option or the more generic one that would function across the board in all content. 
Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, like you mentioned, tuning on something like this is pretty tight uh, and it's a fine balance, but really the intent behind choices like this is that they're close enough so that you can make situational or preferential decisions between something that is reliable like SATs versus something that's like a proc and has, you know, variable uh, applications depending on the content that you're doing. All right, all right. Um, and one last thing that I particularly wanted to know most in, in the functionality of the talents as well, uh, for divine guidance, for each holy power spender you cast, your next consecration does additional holy damage or healing split across all enemies up to a fixed total. Uh, and blessed assurance, casting holy power spender increases the damage and healing of your next crusader strike by 100%. Again, we're talking numbers and I understand that the numbers are very subject to change. And assuming that uh, that's the case, currently both specs um, in, in the sense of the meta that it is in, in the current patch uh, take little to no consecration synergies within their builds uh, while crusader strike for both of the specs and what it transforms to for protection is a low impact ability in terms of its damage output how would the hero talents affect your class and spec talent builds if the damage increase to, let's say like the 100 percent increase to crusader strike would be something impactful enough that people would want to choose blessed assurance over divine guidance uh, sure, I can I can tackle this one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you know, talents like these are kind of outlets for us to give separate tuning knobs for um, holy armament armaments, and you know the numbers are yeah you know as you mentioned are very subject to change you know as the tree really, um, and so ideally we're gonna make these as, as close as possible within each other. Now to the the meteor part of the question, um, talents. <clears throat> In terms of synergies and what's taken in the current impact of things like Crusader Strike, um, we are looking at the core and the base spec trees when looking at hero talents to make sure that these things are both viable as, as you progress, right? Um, reworks or updates to tuning are on the table where appropriate, right? We don't necessarily want to change your existing gameplay. We talked about this with Consecration, right, mm -hmm. earlier just to make a hero talent tree work but if there are things that are so obvious that you know like crusader strike is just really a low impact and Im ability like maybe that really shouldn't be the case maybe that it should be a little bit more impactful right so maybe that is a case for us to actually increase the viability of it a little bit um not just for the hero talent tree to work but also just to give you a more interesting you know if you're not playing lightsmith like maybe Crusader Strike should feel a little bit more impactful um, as Paladin, right? And so that that gives us the opportunity to, to one, give us a different trigger uh, for hero talent trees, but also give players something more interesting to look forward to if baseline or core rotationally. Hopefully that answered. I kind of got off in the weeds there a little bit, but... No, that's that's uh, that's good. Mostly, the question came from the uh, the implication of uh, consecration being stronger and stronger, which I'm not necessarily. Uh, I, I find it interesting whenever a, a spell becomes a center point for a specific playstyle or a build. And from what I understood, from what you guys said, you don't want the holy armaments and the the hero towns to affect the gameplay, the core gameplay, too much. And when uh, the chain this addresses specific spells like Consecration and Crusader Strike, as a prop paladin or holy paladin, I would wonder, oh, do I now have to talent more into Consecration talents to make the synergy more impactful or to make the talent the hero talent more impactful? That's kind of the area of the of the question. Yeah, and, and really it's it's just trying to find that balance for us is really what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we want you to feel like you can play your core class however you like. The the hero talents are going to enhance that. That can be tricky. But again, this is actually really good feedback from the community. If something is swaying too much in one direction and it feels like you're kind of losing a little bit of, of, of your core identity, like those are things that, you know, we want to know, things that we want to make sure, you know, well, one, does that feel good or does it feel bad? Uh, do you want to see more or less of that? Like how how we can go about, um, you know, making these hero talents as exciting for everyone uh, as possible, no matter, you know, which hero talent tree you're playing or spec. Great, great. Um, that's so far off the top of my head. I'm, and I, I bet everybody is uh, curious to test them out whenever they're uh, available on, uh, on for testing. I think uh, Noble has a few more things to say. Yeah, I, I got uh, two major questions. Well, three, but two major questions. Um, first of all, I would ask, what would be the best question to ask you all about the hero talents? Like if something, you have a platform you want to say about the hero talents to those that are watching right now, what would you tell them? Uh, sure. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the most important thing, uh, you know, we want, 
we want your feedback, right? Uh, it's part of the really big uh, part of the reason for this really big push to get these in front of players as early as possible. You know, our goal is to have the majority of these in and play testable by the first public testing when that does become available. You know, some of the, the good things that uh, some of the really good feedback that we would love to hear is, you know, how do you feel about the fantasy of the tree and how well do the talents embody it? You know, what are your thoughts on how these talents will play and their impact to your rotation? Uh, what is your impression of how these talents will affect your class and your talent builds? And, uh, you know, even the feedback on, you know, the names of the talents themselves or the visuals. We talked about visuals a lot here. Like, are we hitting that fantasy uh, with the visuals that you're seeing? Are we selling Are we selling the, the identity of, of the lightsmith to you? Um, you know, those are, you know, those are really important to us. And I think, you know, I, I would love to hear what the community has to say there. And the best way to give us feedback is honestly through our forums. Um, our community team does a great job of organizing them and making them concise so that we can sort of open up a thread and read, all right, here's all our Lightsmith feedback. That being said, we read, you know, Reddit, we read Discords. Um, if you make a TikTok about Lightsmith feedback, I'm probably going to watch it at some point. Uh, so really, it's it's on you, the community, to figure out how you want to present that feedback. Um, the only thing is written feedback is usually easier for us to parse, but really uh, everything's on the table. And we're really looking forward to your feedback. Cool. Yeah, we're going to have links, I believe, in the description as well, where feedback can be left. Um, you mentioned getting these talents out on public testing as soon as possible, whereas at BlizzCon, we were told um, that we're going to see the first iteration on Alpha. Um, what exactly is your design philosophy behind uh, releasing these talents? Like, what can we expect down the line? Sorry, do you mean what is expectation for these when they hit public testing? Oh, no, more like uh, where can we test these? Because we want to get as much feedback as possible. But in general, in the past, alpha, beta have been closed off if pre-order or, or lucky to get invites, whereas PTR mm. is open to people. Um, mm. When could we expect on PTR or on the alpha or invites? How are we going to get people to test these talents? Uh, you know, unfortunately, I can't speak to specific timing windows for things like, you know, public alpha or anything like that. Um, so I really can't give specifics there, but the goal is that way when public alpha or PTR opens up, the majority of these are play testable. So that way people can sort of log in and basically play any spec they like and have a talent tree available to them to give feedback on. But and, I mean, just, and just, and just a real follow up there too. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing blog posts for these, uh, you know, so we're the first initial round is going to be four of these, uh, which will be uh, Lightsmith, Sand Lane, Mountain Thane, and Chrono Warden, right? So while <laughs> paper designs aren't necessarily always the easiest to get feedback on, that's the first step, right? Like we can still get very valuable feedback just based off of what people see here. And honestly, the feedback we, that you guys have already given already is, is super valuable. And our plan is to actually roll out more of these, uh, you know, hero blogs in the future as well so even before we get to the public testing alpha stage hopefully some uh everyone will have a good familiarity with a lot of these hero talents before we even hit that step beautiful um last question will they also be available before the expansion launches like usually we have like a pre-patch where new uh, stuff for the expansion comes in is that hero talents included or is that still to be decided uh, so the so this one's actually interesting, right? Because yeah, a lot of times we'll have these you know these new secondary systems available on on pre patch, but these are actually gated behind leveling up, right? Because these right. are essentially new talent points, so you actually won't be able to get them until you hit, you're able to hit seventy one. So uh, for pre patch, they won't, uh, which selfishly kind of um, I'm a little bit happy about because on the combat side of things. Um, Opening these secondary systems and pre-patch is always a really big headache with uh, what's available. Um, so um, this is one of the few times that we haven't done that in the in recent memory. And so I'm looking forward to things being a little less chaotic during pre-patch. Thanks for jinx jinxing us, Jade. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I know. It's over <laughs> now, right? <laughs> oh, man. This sounds Beautiful. like uh, whenever pre-patch is going to hit, people are going to... I would imagine it would be part of the UI at the very least. So people be able to see it and what's coming and the hype is going to build and it's like, oh, I want to play, I want to play, I want to unlock that Lightsmith. And uh, it's maybe create more and more, let's say, a desire to level up really quick and uh, get the get your hands on all of them. But That's yeah. the hope. That is definitely the hope for sure. Can't wait to see it, honestly. Like we, we have it on paper right now, but I can't wait to see it visually play out. But I think we are about done with uh, the questionnaires, right, Flynn? Yes, yes. Uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, once again, thank you guys for uh, agreeing to do to this interview. Feedback is always something that we, uh, I mean, everybody loves to do, but it's uh, great to see all the channels being so open and uh, 
gets I would imagine everybody so excited to test these out and actually get uh, our hands on uh, the war within. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. This is awesome. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you guys. Have a have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, can't wait for that uh, PTR. Yeah, happy thank holidays. You guys. Don't forget them. Ha yeah, happy yep. holidays. <laughs> oh,